Lipids are another type of polymer or organic molecule, and the monomers are fatty acids and glycerol, typically. We have a glycerol right here, and this is our fatty acid ending. Lots of carbons, lots of hydrogens. Uh, this could be a triglyceride, and then it would have three of these. Where's my arrow? If we put three of those chains on there, then we call it a triglyceride, and there's diglycerides. So these are the main building blocks, fatty acids and glycerol, for all of our big lipids. Lipids do not dissolve or react with water, which is very important because our bodies are 66% water. So if we didn't have some lipid structures, everything would be dissolving in water and we'd turn into a big puddle of goo. So our cells in particular have a nice coating of a lipid layer on the outside of them, making up the cell membrane, and that keeps the goodies inside the cell that are watery, and then the water that's bathing the cell uh, can't dissolve the cell membrane. So that particular function of lipids is very important, that it doesn't dissolve in water. You guys know oil and water don't mix. So this is a picture of, you know, balsamic vinegar here sitting in olive oil. You probably had it at a restaurant. Vinegar is mainly water. So oil and water don't mix. Lipids have many important functions in the body. Fats and oils, be fats for humans that we use, have long-term energy storage. We all know that. We eat too much food. We pick up some extra fat in you know, our fat reserve locations, our buttocks, under our arms, our thighs, wherever you happen to put it on your body. There's also thermal insulation. We keep a nice little layer of um, fat in our skin to help us retain our body heat. If you're heavier, then you have more of that thermal insulation, and it might be tougher for you to cool yourself on those hot summer days. We also use fat for cushioning. You know, around our eyeballs, which are a vital organ to us and kind of vulnerable, we pad around the eyeball with fat. Our kidneys, which are also a vital organ, located in our backs, aren't protected by bones. So if you get punched in the back, that's going to possibly kill you. So there's a layer of cushioning around your kidneys as well. Steroids, you guys know about some steroids, illegal steroids. The steroids in your body help you make hormones. You also have corticosteroids that help fight inflammation, help you deal with stress. Waxes, not super important for humans, because, you know, we just have a little bit of earwax to keep the critters out of our ears. But for plants, waxes are very important because they provide a waterproof coating on the leaves that keep water from leaving. Ha! Huh, that's a cute little pun. Keep water from leaving um, so that they can retain their water better. And then phospholipids are this big component in the cell membrane around cells and help regulate what's going in and out of the cells and keep the cells from dissolving. Fats are used for long-term energy storage because gram for gram they contain twice as many calories as the carbohydrates. As you can see, fat gives you nine calories per gram where the sugars give you only four calories per gram. So if you were going to store something on your body, you'd want to get more bang for your buck. You'd want to get more energy per gram, not have to carry around as much weight. Another important thing to note is saturated fats are not as good for you as unsaturated fats. And this is what a saturated fat looks like right here. See this chunk of the carbon chain? it is saturated with hydrogens, hydrogens all around it. So that's what makes a fat saturated. If you look down here, whoops, down here where there's a double bond, then that makes it an unsaturated fat where you've got some double bonds thrown in. So unsaturated is good for you, saturated is bad for you, clogs your arteries. 
Saturated fats come from animal fat, and they're typically solids at room temperature. Your butters, your margarine, lard. We want to limit the number of those you have in your diet because they contribute to heart disease. Unsaturated fats are the fats you want to have in your diet. They're typically liquids at room temperature, and they come from plants, things like olive oil, vegetable oil. This is the difference in the molecular structure. Here we have a saturated fat, and what that means is every carbon is bound to hydrogens and completely saturated. It's covered in hydrogens. Down here at the bottom, we have an unsaturated fat, and if you look right there, there's a difference between these molecules. That double bond means those carbons aren't saturated with hydrogens, and that makes it a healthier molecule for us. The phospholipids are a slightly modified fatty acid and glycerol monomer. Now we're going to add a phosphate, and you can see it right here. There's the P in our sponge. So phospholipids make up your, or they're a big component of your cell membranes. Okay, so phospholipids again are very important for a cell membrane. We don't want the cells dissolving in water, and this little guy right here with the gray head and the little squiggly yellow tail is one phospholipid and this whole structure here is a cell membrane so cells are completely surrounded by water they've got water inside they've got water outside so that phospholipid layer keeps the cell from dissolving steroids are a type of lipid they are used as one small component of the cell membrane. They are important to help us make our hormones. Proteins were also important for helping us make hormones. Cholesterol, this is a good cholesterol. We want this cholesterol in our body. It is made by lipids. And these lipid molecules have ring-shaped carbons. So, lipids, we've said, were long-term energy storage molecules besides having some other functions in the body. And I just wanted to show you a typical average man, 175 pound, and look at his energy reserves that would be in his body. So, from the fats, we have 100,000 calories right here. We also know from talking about carbohydrates that they can also be used as energy molecules. So, we have... 600 calories in glycogen, which would be stored in the liver and the muscles. And then our immediate quick energy supply is our glucose molecule right there. But you can see proteins can also be used as energy molecules. We don't want to use our protein as energy molecules, but if we were starving or on some sort of starvation diet where we weren't feeding our body enough building blocks, our body would start eating away our own proteins to give us some energy. And muscles are one of those proteins that are going to go. So if you've seen somebody that's um, starving, they look like they're skin and bones, right? And that's because their muscle has been eaten away as an energy supply to run their body's chemical activities, keep their metabolism going.